Hi, I'm back. I just did a video um, the other day about two dreams that I had. About um, one was like a message, like a verbal message about trouble coming, and the other one was about um, I, I was driving over faults. Like the there's a I guess in Hollywood I was driving Hollywood, Los Angeles area, and um, going over some hills, and they were they were clearly pointed out in the dream that those were faults, and that's where the earthquake was coming. Then I saw the um, Salton Sea where the San Andreas Fault in Southern California begins. And I was saying that's where the other earthquake is going to hit. And um, I forgot to mention this when I did my video the other day. Um, I don't know if you, you may have heard about this. I'm, I know I'm late talking about it. I'm sure other people on YouTube have already mentioned this. But you may have heard in the news, it was on ABC News, like. I think the national news and then as I'm sure local news as well and then NBC News and some of the others but it, it talked about some rare sea creatures who washed up on shore they beached themselves back in October and October 13th to be exact was the, one, the first one was discovered eight, an 18 foot long oarfish which are very large sized fish that are very very rarely seen on the surface they usually live deep in, below the ocean um, you know, right where we can't, most people don't usually see them. And um, there was a second one that washed up that was 14 feet long, you know, and that was in San Diego County. The other one was off of the coast of Catalina Island. So, and they say it's a once in a lifetime, I'm getting this from the NBC News website, but they say it's a once in a lifetime of, of occurrence or event for these beachgoers who found this giant fish. And one of the articles here says, can oarfish predict earthquakes? Maybe it's not as crazy as it sounds, because there's a Japanese legend that says that they are um, foretellers of doom, of trouble. And it says, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm assuming it says, Ryugu no Tsukai. And it says, or messenger from the sea god's palace. Well, I don't believe in mythological folklore. I believe in one God, um, God Almighty, God Almighty, but um, but it says that that and it, it may not. The reason why this article and others point out that that may not sound as crazy as what it sounds like, what you think, because they believe that their messengers are. And one one article called it harbingers of trouble. It says that um, fourteen, and I got this from the ABC News website. Fourteen oarfish stranded themselves on the beach in Japan a year before the major Japan quake that struck in March. They stranded themselves in March and then the following year the quake occurred in March. Now one geologist says this, and I'm sure others would agree, that there is no direct correlation. It's never been proven, if you will, that there is a connection between the two. So it says that geologists are studying these fish. They want to study them closer to see if there is a correlation because they said other animals have like within seconds, you know, predict it. Sometimes, maybe even days before, you might see the animals acting strange, like dogs, or just more on edge than normal, barking, whining, so forth. They said in um, India or Indonesia, I think it was on the NBC News website, that 11, some elephants went uphill because of a quake was coming. Um, they knew. Um, and then here I'm seeing in March of 2010, this is dozens of the deep sea denizens talking about these oarfish were discovered by Japanese fishermen around. Okay, so this they didn't find them in Chile, or did they? This is dozens of the deep sea. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is dozens of the deep sea creatures. These oarfish were discovered by Japanese fishermen around the time a powerful 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake struck Chile in March 2010. So that was found in Chile. These fish that I talked about earlier. So a year later. That's when the Japan quake struck. It was March of 2011. So sorry, I had the story a little backwards, but um, now I've, I've hopefully clarified that. So it just says that one specialist in ecological seismology told the Jap Japan Times, "Deep sea fish living, deep sea fish living near the sea bottom are more sensitive to the movements of active faults than those near the surface of the sea." So just something to make you wonder. Um, I've been, so my son's watching a video on YouTube in the background. And he's having a ball, as you can hear. But I was just looking at, I've, I've studied, um, I've heard about Joe Brandt's dream. I've not studied it, but I've read it when I, after I had my first dream about the earthquakes. That's when I started trying to see what was that all about. I bet it has, you know, has anyone else 
had this dream or vision or something. And that's when I first discovered Joe Brandt. It was 2010, the first time I ever heard of him. And another man, um, William Branahan, who was a Branahan, he was a pastor or an evangelist, and he spoke in the 60s, I think it was the 60s, that he was warning Los Angeles of, of the great earthquake that was coming, that the Lord was sending it to um, send uh, judgment to this nation, or to this, uh, that city. Um, and was asking Los Angeles, this pastor was asking Los Angeles to repent, and really was the Lord asking Los Angeles to repent. And he's really asking all of us to repent, you know, not just Los Angeles, but Los Angeles isn't a person, but you know what I mean. He's asking everyone who, who will hear his voice to repent before the time is, is before it's too late, before you, you could get hit in a car, I mean, you could, hit, you could have a car accident, you could die in a car accident, you could meteoric fall in the sky and hit you, something crazy. It doesn't have to be the earthquake, but we have to be ready at all times because we don't know when our, our time is. And um, I was thinking back earlier today too, because it's been heavy on my mind again. I don't know why, but I was at a church meeting, and I mentioned this in my January 2010 dream about the major quake that I saw in California, in Southern California. I don't think, I haven't mentioned Northern California a lot, but it doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, it's not a focus of mine, because it is definitely a focus of mine. I don't think I've seen destruction in Northern California. My twin sister had. She saw Eureka, California. And others have seen San Francisco, California, the Golden Gate Bridge collapsing and falling in. And I did see the Pacific Northwest. I saw a major quake occurring in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State to be exact, off of the coast of Washington State. That's way before I knew that Washington State, that whole uh, Washington area, sits on a subduction zone, just like, much like, excuse me, I'm chewing off minute, much like the one in Chile and uh, Japan. It's that type of zone. California does not sit on the subduction zone. Um, it sits on their it's their plates. There there are two plates, but the faults are um, the San Andreas fault specifically. And I'm sorry for stumbling all over my words, but just trying to get these thoughts out as I remember them. The San Andreas fault is a right lateral strike step fault where the ground is moving, the plates are moving past each other like this. Subduction zones the ground some land is being subducted or going under other another plate. But in the San Andreas plate boundaries, both plates are sliding past each other. That's the difference. And the subduction zone quakes can cause more powerful. That's when you get into the 9.0s and higher type of earthquakes and you have those giant tsunamis. Not to mention that, not to say that a tsunami cannot occur with, you know, Southern California. A lot of people have seen that as well. Um, I saw two, had two tsunami dreams and didn't realize at the time that they were tsunami dreams. I, I, that's before I put Japan, quake and tsunami. The most recent one that I, you know, knew that I really realized what I was seeing. I had no idea where that water could have come that, come from that fast. Um, and I did see um, that one right out of my head, but I did think of this. I had a dream that I don't think I may have done a short video about it at the end of the summer, but I saw. I, that's the only dream I've ever had a date, and I didn't have a year, didn't have a day, but I had a month. I'll put it that way. And something was going to happen in June in this one particular dream. And I'm not saying that, please don't say, oh, you're not a, who, how do you know dates? I'm not telling you what I had in my dream. I saw something about the month of June. And I kept saying the dream, I got to get out of here. I got to move before June. I got to get out of here. And I was kind of resolved to stay here in California because, I don't know, different reasons. I was thinking of staying in California, but. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling that again. I've seen too much, like in my sleep and stuff, and, and not just in my sleep. I've had too many warnings. When I think about these things, I get overcome, and I, like, I get really, really emotional. I can't explain it. I get choked up, like teary-eyed, and I just want to weep and cry. One time I was talking to my sister about it, and I just began to weep. I could feel like the Lord's presence on me, and I just began to weep and cry for souls. The souls. I kept just. Like, whoa, I kept saying, I, out of my mouth, I kept saying, whoa, 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 like, like a mourning type for souls that were going to be lost, and souls that were going to perish in these terrible events that are going to strike California. It's not a matter of if we know it's when. The scientists can tell you that. Um, and what scares me is I was researching 
like the Bay Area, I'm on the, the USGS website, and it says Bay Area Earthquake prob Probabilities. It says, um, Earthquakes in the San Francisco Bay region result from strain energy constantly accumulating across the region because of the northwestward motion of the Pacific Plate relative to the North American Plate. So the plates moving past each other. The strain energy that's caused by that is stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up, stored up until eventually it's not released and resulting in an earthquake. Well, the scary thing is that the last major quake that we've had here in Southern California was Northridge quake, 1994, 6.7, 20 kill, 20 billion dollars in direct losses, it says, and then um, Northern California has had some very large destructive earthquakes as well, it says, and those, it says, the region experienced large and destructive earthquakes in 1838, 1868, the great 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake. Well, they have had, since 1838, as you can see, and as recently as 1989, they've had that stress being released, of all that accumulated strain and stress has been released. But it says that they will also experience future large earthquakes to relieve this continually, because it's all, all, all still accumulating, continually accumulating strain. And it says they are a certainty, the future large earthquakes are a certainty. How scary a thought, because if they've already had such large devastating quakes, and yet it's saying there's still more strain to be released, and yet there's more future quakes that are slated to, I mean, that are going to occur. What does that say about Southern California, especially the part of the San Andreas Fault? And I'll try, I'm, I'm working on, I got some more stuff to put together, a video, I'm so excited about finally getting it done. I have a little tiny plot of time to try to do it while I'm here at the hospital with my son. But um, Southern California has not experienced, like on the southern San, end of the San Andreas, they have not experienced a major quake. We were like over 300 years, 300 years overdue. 1865, I believe, was the Fort Dunlop quake, which is what they call the Big Bend part of the San Andreas Fault, where it starts to curve and starts to move northward. And that was the last time we had a fault there. But below that, from that point on, to the Salton Sea, including San Bernardino area and points in between, Palm Springs and points in between. They have not experienced a major quake since then, so it's like the stress. Can you imagine the amount of stress that has accumulated? It's, I can't even fathom my mind. My mind can't wrap. I can't wrap my mind around that. You know what lies underneath. I had a dream called Sleeping Giant. That's what it was called. As I was waking, I had Sleeping Giant. Or not when I was waking, but after I woke, I was thinking about the dream I had sleeping giant. And I had another dream that overtook us. That one was about a volcanic blast. But these things are not, and it's gotten so strong in my spirit, these things are not like, to be taken lightly. People joke about it, they mock about it, they laugh, they tease, they call you every name in the book, you're crazy. Why? I don't get it. It's something that you know what's going to happen, and you're calling people crazy just because you're trying to warn other people to. Be prepared, like if you don't know Christ, you can't take a chance with your life, with eternity. What if you say there's no God, what if you're wrong? What if there is? You say there's no hell, what if there is? You know, in the Word of God, I have a strong believer and clearly says that there is an afterlife. And we will give an account, we will stand before God and give an account of what we've done in our bodies. And what we've done with Christ, whether or not we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, because He is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to Jesus Christ, or th to heaven, or to, you know, to the kingdom of God, except through Jesus Christ, his, his redemptive lamb that he sent to redeem us of our sins. So these days are, are exciting times. They're also scary in some senses. And I know we're not to be afraid that we're to put our trust in God. Um, and again, I always point this out that Say we survive, or whoever's here is survive that, that quake, then you need to have stuff to get by. You're going to be here, like, witnessing to people and, and trying to comfort people. Like, you know, a lot of people are going to be losing their minds. They're going to lose their families. They're going to lose everything they have, and their peace is going to be shaken. So you need to be able to be here to give the answer, you know, as to or hope, you know, give that hope that to assure men that, you know, whatever the Lord gives us to say in that hour, and whoever is here, or me or whoever, we have to have you need water to live to do you know to sustain yourself and food and things like that. So I'm always like talking about that, like when I talk about these videos, which I kind of shied away from for a while. I haven't had time. I'm so sick, but long story short, it just helps to be prepared spiritually first 
and then physically and, and, and the like. So um, I guess until next time, and I'll, I'll just keep researching things, and if I find, as I find things, I'll come back to you. I just wanted to point out one more thing I just remembered. So I was watching the Joe Brandt video. Someone did a video, video, but several, several videos are on there about him. But Joe Brandt was saying that he smelled and smelled like sulfur. And I remember, you might remember not too long ago in Southern California, I think it was last year, but, um, was it last year? The year before, that there was a strange sulfur smell that washed up. I mean, that was flooded, flooding Southern California. And still there was, there was an explanation given that just didn't sit well with a lot of people, including Mommy. myself. Okay, so I gotta go on that note, but it's just interesting when he smelled sulfur and he said it's like a death like smell. So, um, I don't know, I know it's been like a year and a little over a year since that sulfur smell came in Southern California, but we just have to do something to, to watch. So, okay, guys, well, I shall return at another date and God bless you guys. Take care and keep us in your prayers, especially my little guy. Bye.